recapping yesterday while looking ahead to today's sports day. This is the Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3. Hey, nice to have you with us this morning on the Morning Drive. Uh, I want to talk about this a uh, couple times today because it was uh, historic yesterday as uh, the Lady Raiders uh, are now uh, officially name, image, and likeness signed, sealed, and delivered uh, by Level 13 Agency. Uh, each of the 14 girls, uh, it was announced yesterday, will receive $25,000 uh, in exchange for their name, image, and likeness. They'll be doing uh, work on behalf of that, but uh, Level 13 Agency, led by Kirk Knowles and then uh, Mark McDougal, Keith McNeese. You don't know Keith McNeese, but you know Shaggy. That's what everybody calls him. Uh, and Ross Rushing, uh, all part of that, um, and others that were involved in that. Uh, but they made a decision. They've been working on this for quite some time, and, and talking to the guys yesterday, they made, they made a decision, I think as late as Monday or Tuesday, or even er, earlier this week, or it, it, certainly by Wednesday, um, to, to go to the full 25 and match what was given to the football team. Uh, initially it was, uh, in the 15,000 range in speaking to some of the team yesterday, they had no idea what, um, the meeting was about yesterday. So they didn't know the number when they assembled over at the Womble yesterday and, uh, sat down and, uh, and heard from, uh, Kirk, um, that they were each going to receive $25,000, uh, as part of their, uh, name, image, and likeness services on which they'll do community work or make appearances or do some things, uh, but it's guaranteed money. And it's historic because this is the first women's basketball team in the country team wide to get a deal and get a deal at this level. Uh, other schools are working on it. My understanding is LSU is working on it. Texas is working on it. There'll be other schools that will follow suit, but Texas tech is first. And you know, just it sends the message to this team and to future future teams and future team members that if you come here, not only are you going to play in the Big 12, play in a nice facility, have uh, an extraordinary practice facility, but you're also going to be taken care of uh, because of, uh, of booster support and alumni support and business support. Um, and exponentially, this is going to help uh, raise the tide uh, substantially for this basketball team. Well, and, and getting over the hump probably isn't the right word but or phrase, but... Uh something to kickstart a, a, a program that, that feels like it's been uh, just, just, you know, not, not terribly far off uh, under, under a number of regimes, but just not able to really get back mm-hmm. to a tournament tournament ready uh, yet. Maybe this is, this is a little bit of a kickstart that, that helps you sort of get to that, get to that place. But uh, yeah, no, that's, that's cool. I mean, it, it's, it's interesting that Texas tech and even the football deal made, uh, even though there's you know similar stuff all over the country, sure that made pretty big news in in the sense that all these other folks that sort of look down at Texas Tech and and consider themselves to be a bigger deal are going oh uh, even Texas Tech in this conference realignment era is is way ahead of you know Oregon or whoever uh, in how they're handling NIL uh, and now on the on the women's side that's a that like you said truly I, you know, I've heard nothing like this even 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 half of that money or even even the consideration of anyone having an entire team being covered uh, anywhere in the country. So you're right. I mean, it's 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 historic in the sense that uh, front of the line, for sure. Well, it, it will help uh, those coaches um, in terms of how they're making that presentation. I don't know how that recruiting pitch goes to other coaches or to, to potential players or their parents or guardians or things along those lines. Uh, but it certainly – certainly gives them an extra bullet um, when they're, you know, going out and, and making their presentations to prospective players, um, in addition to the educational aspect and, and just, you know, playing and whatnot. Uh, and talking to a couple of girls uh, yesterday, that their thought was 10, that they were going to get 10. And, I, I, I mean, it was, it was emotional for them. I mean, they, they, it was emotional for the guys making the announcement as they looked out in the crowd and saw their daughters uh, and then saw the girls and their reaction, the, the level of appreciation uh, that it was expressed uh, by the team, uh, I think made it all worthwhile to these guys that went into their pockets and uh, scratched out checks and put this thing together. Um, so I think it's, uh, it, it's huge. Um, it obviously sends a message 
um, to the rest of the basketball community, to the AAU community, to because this this is uh, you know going to be nationwide news, as, certainly in the basketball community. And um, does it help you win more games this year? Uh, I don't know. I mean, you never know with a with a vote of confidence. I mean, I will tell you. I mean, the roster uh, has changed. It's improved. I mean, they've they've got a legitimate big. They've they've got you know some outside shooting. They brought in some uh, experience. They brought in some freshmen. Um, they're they're working out right now. Coach Gurley told me yesterday they they basically have unlimited practice time as they get ready to go to Greece. So I mean they've been working out like banshees, um, and so going to, to Greece will help them from a team bonding standpoint. They'll play some games over there, um, and and it's a great cultural experience. I mean, you know probably I, you know I don't know how many people in Lubbock have been to Greece, but I would venture to say damn few, right? <laughs> yeah, no, not a. But I think everybody would love to go there. Yeah, why? Why, why wouldn't you? There's, why wouldn't there's you? A lot, of, a lot of, well, like maybe more history there than anywhere else in the world for one particular country. But I, I think Israel might say something about. Well, that. that's well, yeah, any, <laughs> any, anywhere. The Mediterranean can claim a lot. Can't yeah, it? right, uh, right. But the the fact that even for a, lo- a local, I think you know, Lady Raider basketball for some might be an afterthought in a lot of ways. Just. Uh, Number one, because you're so far removed from some of your big successes, and then number two, the men's program uh, you know, maybe usurping a lot of the average Joe's uh, time and, and attention. Um, but I, I, I think this proves that there's still folks around that this is very important to, mm-hmm. uh, and that 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 chunk of it might not be the uh, uh, oh, and I don't. My wife and I call them all sorts of things, but the blue hairs that that like I mean were living in the arena right uh sadly but a lot of the ones that were around when i was in college might not be with us anymore right but, and and the problem is that you haven't been to the tournament in 10 years yeah any tournament right right in 10 years 2013 was the last time and that was a very are you a short-lived or short-lived guy short-lived i'm a short-lived guy really yeah he's are you the only a, one just are you a, about that i don't think i've ever heard that yeah. he's the short only one let it go is, is the proper way well I, I i i can see where it makes sense short-lived are you an either or either guy neither or neither or I, neither. I, either or neither it doesn't matter okay to me Any, anyway that was a very short-lived short-lived tournament appearance by the lady raiders it was yeah, one, i mean they what, were one and done when was the last time that you won a game oh uh, seven oh six yeah maybe I, I don't know i don't i don't know i don't I, have i have to go back and and look i i will tell you chuck this week um I became a owner of Lady Raiders season tickets. Did you really? Well, good for you. I uh, I, I don't. What inspired I got, that? I got an email, and I looked at the pricing, and I thought, you know, I don't have a reason not to do this. Okay. And so, well, good. Well, we I don't know how you. many times I will darken the door because <clears throat> sure. between everything else I do with my family and the fact that we are pretty religious attenders of any men's basketball game, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, but I have tickets I can give to somebody else. Sure. On a regular basis, if we can't make it, but I thought, you know what, I can do that. So some of you might be wanting in, in your mind and, and saying to yourself, self, what about baseball? And my understanding in talking to some of the guys last night from level 13, baseball's next. And, and, and really, you kind of look at this and go, okay, you already had men's basketball taken care of. You just took care of, of football. And now, you know, you had the, the women's basketball team that was kind of right in front of you. So get that taken care of, and then they'll work on baseball next. Well, and you got 40 guys that you're talking about. That's going to be a tougher one to figure out what the number is because that number can change week before the season starts, mm-hmm. week before, you know, spring practice begins, depending on who transfers into you and everything. And what's different about baseball that people, most people still don't understand this. And even, even now they don't, they, they feel like something's changed in the It hasn't. You get 11.7 scholarships, period. And, yeah. you know, that, that 11.7 has not changed in, in, in all the things that have moved I, I around. I think that's got to change. I, mean, I do too. And I think, you know. But, um, but no one <clears> is getting a full ride to play baseball anywhere in America. And I, I, I make Probably. this contention that we have reached a point in college athletics that we should have every, every person that is a scholarship athlete at uh, every school, especially Power Five. I don't care if you're running track. Or if you're playing baseball, everybody should have tuition, books, and uh, be a part of the meal plan at, at the bare minimum. There's there's plenty of seats that are empty in these classrooms that's not going to cost them any extra money for the, for those baseball players to go sit in that seat. Yeah, and it's the economics and the funny money of how they move this all around. Bottom line is there's enough money in that athletic department if you distribute it properly. 
that you should be able to have all your scholarship, all your kids on scholarship, at least getting tuition and books. Okay. Getting you up and getting your sports day started. This is the Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3. Today is the 29th day of July, 2022. This day in sports history. Here is Jeff McGuire. Going to look at 1921 to kick us off, gentlemen. As the Cleveland's 120th anniversary celebration continues. Cleveland, like, is in the city? Yes. Okay. Because Grover Cleveland being 125 years old would be like a record. He would be a lot older than that at this point. Well, I mean, I, I in 1921, it, I think that was a legitimate question. I mean, well, I'm just Cleveland, saying, the Grover of, Cleveland was probably already dead in 1921, well dead. Probably. Let's well, see. He was he was president in 1892 18, and 1884. <clears throat> I'm not going to argue with the uh, historian. No, no, here. I'm not arguing with him. He's either. the only president to ever serve non consecutive terms. Correct. You, you just you just poked a bear for me again. I'm getting <laughs> I'm getting poked a lot. But people say he's the 22nd and the 24th president, and that's how all historians handle it, and I think that's ludicrous. He's the 22nd president. Somebody so, else should have been 24th. He was 22nd, and he was 22nd He was again. the 22nd person to become president of the United States. He expired on June the 24th, 1908. None of that, however, <laughs> has anything to do with the city of Cleveland celebrating their 125th anniversary. <laughs> But he was indeed, for a fact, the 22nd and the 24th president of the United States of America. Which I think is absurd. But go ahead, Jeff. Proceed. It's, it's your day in sports history, sure? Jeff McGuire. Yes, I'm okay. sorry. I apologize. The city of Cleveland celebrating their 125th <laughs> anniversary in 1921. <laughs> Anybody? No. Nope. Okay. <laughs> I do, I, I'm going to hijack you again because see, I, I learned something this week too. Huey Lewis... You know, the heart of rock and roll right. is the beat then? Oh, I thought that the words always were, the heart of rock and roll is in Cleveland. I thought that's what the Which whole song said forever. True as well. I learned that like three days ago, by the way. Just blew me away. Didn't realize that's what the lyrics were. So Cleveland, Jeff. <sighs> Celebrating their 125th anniversary, they have a baseball game. Like celebrities and whatnot. Cy Young at 54 mm. pitches two innings in said game. 1950, Pee Wee Reese hits his three hits the 3,000th Dodger home run. Mm. 1974, St. Louis Cardinals Lou Brock steals his 700th base. 1983, Steve Garvey ends his National League record 1,207 consecutive game streak. God, he was just such a. Not nice person. Steve Garvey? Yeah. <laughs> he, he, he just always had that look on his face like, I'm better than you. Uh, almost a thousand games less than Ripken in yeah. the AL. Wow. That's amazing. That really puts that in perspective. 1989, White Sox trade Harold Baines to the Rangers mm. for Scott Fletcher and Sammy Sosa. 1995, Monica Costello beats Martina Navratilova in, to, in her return to tennis. 1996, a year later, Tommy Lasorda retires with a record of 1,599 wins versus 1,439 losses, four National League pennants, and two World Series championships. He retired in season? In season. His health got him. He couldn't go one more game? I think, I think he had a heart attack like a week ago and okay. was sidelined, if I remember correctly. Okay. I could have that wrong, but I'm if I remember, it's something health-related. Okay. And in 2001, Lance Armstrong did not win the Tour de France. <laughs> Even though he did. He didn't. I have it right here. Did not win. It is National Lasagna Day. Uh, speaking of Tommy Lasorda, maybe that's why he's... Had the heart attack. And it's National Chicken Wing Day. Mm. So I'm in on both of those. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to imagine a place where those two things could live in the same uh, dish. Uh, chicken wings and... It'd have to be boneless wings, which are, nuggets. are basically nuggets. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with nuggets. And I don't mind wings. calling them boneless wings either. <laughs> because 
They're really good. I'm calling whatever you want. Happy birthday, former Red Raider baseball player Barrett Barnes turns 31 today. Oh, yeah. Happy birthday to NASA turning 64. How about that? Dak Prescott, 29. Will Wheaton, 50. Josh Randor is 48. And documentary maker extraordinaire Ken Burns turned 70 today. And on this day in 1588, off the coast of France, Spain's so-called Invincible Armada is defeated by the English naval forces under the command of Lord Charles Howard and Sir Francis Drake. After eight hours of uh, ferocious fighting, a change in wind direction prompted the Spanish to break off from the battle and retreat toward the North Sea. Its hopes of invading crushed. Uh, the remnants of the Spanish Armada began a long and difficult journey back to Spain. And that's the state. And the trajectory of dominance in the Western world changed in that moment. Yep. According to most historians. Okay. The uh, your memory is really good on Tommy Lasorda. Uh, June twenty third of ninety six was his last game as the Dodgers skipper uh, at Dodger Stadium, winning four three over Houston. Following day, he drove himself to the hospital, complaining of abdominal pain. He was having a heart attack. Bill Russell would take the reins of the team on an interim basis. He would recover, but the Dodgers decided to make Russell's appointment permanent on July 29th, at which time Tommy Lasorda formally announced his retirement. So there you go. Good job. Uh, 651 this morning here on the morning drive. Thoughts, comments, Yates Flooring Center chat line. Go to double T973.com for that of the mobile app. Benchmark hotline is open too at 806 771 We'll have Astros baseball on the air for you tonight. They take on Seattle, uh, as uh, Aaron Dickens likes to say, at the juice box. That'll be a 640 broadcast time and about a 705 first pitch. Well, if you've <laughs> ever been there. From Houston. Yeah, I've been there. It's a box. Mm-hmm. And it's sponsored by Minimade. Minimade, right. Juice box. Uh, Rangers and the Angels tonight from the Big A in Anaheim. Broadcast time, 8 o'clock here on Double T 97.3, 835 or so. First pitch uh, tonight from Anaheim. Also tonight, or excuse me, also tomorrow, uh, those two teams, all those teams will be playing night games and then Sunday afternoon I will have uh, games as well. It's uh, expected to be, I think, another hot one this weekend. Here's where we are. <laughs> yes, very, very warm. Uh, not going to be broadcast here, but uh, LISD Hall of Honor uh, mm-hmm. induction ceremony tomorrow night. Okay. Are you, is that required, required attendance for you? Um, I believe it will be for me this this go around. Yeah. <laughs> well, is there somebody that you know that's going in? Uh, well, a lot of a lot of Monterey folks. Okay. Uh, the 1981 state championship team going to go in. The, the girls basketball team. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then uh, Chris Etheridge will go in as an individual mm-hmm. who played on that team at Monterey. Uh, <coughs> and then later, is she at, still coaching? No, uh, I think she's still teaching. I believe. Oh, this is Chris. Her sister is the one that's... Kami is at Washington State. Kami, yeah. Yes, Kami's and the they actually are trending in a very good direction there. Okay. Chris is, was at uh, Coronado for a long, long Correct. time. Correct, yes. And uh, uh, Coach James is, is heading up that program now. But I think... I don't know if she's coaching golf, maybe. She might be doing something still in the coaching realm. But okay. I, I believe she's still educating. Okay, educating. Do you have a desire to go back to the classroom at any point in time? Yes, I do. Really? I will, I will not in my career administrating if I can help it. I will teach again. Would you ever consider teaching at the collegiate level? Uh, yeah, you, you, maybe. You, you, you seem to me a, a bit of a guy that would be good in the classroom, um, like have one class just to kind of keep your fingers Well, in and it. I, to me, that's if it was up to me, every administrator in school would still be teaching a as class. part of their day. To kind of help and uh, I, and keep I was, them real? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and to remind you of what your teachers are actually, it's just every step you take in one direction or another, mm-hmm. it's it's easy to lose the hat you used to wear. And I think that, that helps a lot. But I, I was fortunate last year that uh, our, our AP U.S. history teacher, dual credit teacher, um, was a reservist, and he got called to the border. And so we were without him for about four or five months. And uh, at one point we decided to shift – uh, shift how we were handling that away from having a, a, a long-term sub, sub and, and have some people that could prepare those kids for the, cause that test is also, that class is also star tested or end of course exam tested. So you have an AP test and a, a test you have to pass to graduate. So I taught for six weeks. Um, and that was 
thoroughly enjoyable for me. Good for, for you. For one period a day. I loved it. Well, I mean, keep going after your superintendent license and uh, pursue your PhD. And then when you're the head daddy rabbit of uh, LISD, you can declare every administrator at every school will have at least one class. And you can make that rule. I I might I might try that, but I doubt it'll happen in a district this big. <laughs> Motley County, I'm coming for you. <laughs> All right, just All you administrators, some... both of you will be teaching. We uh we'll talk some tech football next. You good with that? I love it. Okay. Getting you up and getting your sports day started. This is the Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3. Nice to have you with us. Garrett Luff's in for Jamie Lent this morning. Jamie will be back on uh, Monday. Jeff McGuire's here. I'm here. My name is Chuck Hines, your humble host. Just uh, helping to steer this raft through whatever it is that we're we're going through. Uh, rapids or just calm, cool water. Feels very calm and cool right now. Yeah, very pleasant. Would you <clears throat> would you ever be a guy that would uh, take your family on the Colorado Rapids or something along those lines? I think that'd be cool. I would not be like you know some people are built for that in the sense that hey I know what I'm doing mm-hmm. let me lead the way family. I would be more <laughs> like the do we do we have a guide? Is there someone who knows? I will bring my family under your guidance, but I don't know what's happening. Which which of the ones would would not get in the uh, raft with you? Would Mrs. Luff get in the raft with you? Oh, she's yeah, she's probably got more uh, adventure to her than I have. Really, I would, I would okay. So I would say both uh, your boys would be all in, right? Yeah. Oh, and my daughter would be too. How is uh, how's the fifteen year old doing? Sixteen year old. Sixteen year old. And uh, pretty good. Are you? I think she slept in her own bed about nine days total, <laughs> nine nights, because of all of the events and things that right. she's traveled to, mostly church related. So I okay. shouldn't complain, but it's just uh, right. I don't feel like I know who she is anymore. Well, those, seen her. those kids have you know they they wander off the path too. So just you know don't always assume that it's just. <clears throat> You know, all pinwheels and uh, yeah, well, and, no, I, and, I, I, uh, I recognize that. And but she's, rounds or whatever it is. They're coming back today from middle school mission trip where uh-huh. she's where she's she been? been a sponsor in Corpus Christi. Okay, okay, fixing up stuff down there. Good for them. Um, are you smart? Are you guys still smart? Or are you guys pretty much stupid with the sixteen-year-old? Uh, it depends on the day. And how does she like having her old man at her high school? Um, she. It, it's okay. It's okay. I think I think we we have a, a pretty good avoidance of each other. Unless she less. really needs something like lunch money, gas money, you know, is has a, a, a dire. Well, need. and that's number one. She knows I can't really leave because there's just not time for that. Uh, she used to text her mom and say, "Mom, will you will you send me a favor meal? Will you buy me lunch and send it? You know, whatever the different." options of sending food are right uh because she knew that i was going to give her a swift no on that one swift no but uh <laughs> but i think she's even stopped bothering her mom for i forgot my lunch i don't i'm like yeah, <clears throat> guess what there's a free lunch provided by the federal government the state of texas and the lubbock independent school district right there next to where you're sitting so so we'll, go ahead and pick one up march march on down there sweet sweet and darling pretty, uh, Air Mar- good? Airmark lunch i i there's many options of which do I they have am, the pizza squares still uh no not at the high school we have legit uh we have legit pizzas oh wow provided from outside <clears throat> very nice the uh <clears throat> the uh the uh, mi- miniature roman brings us the okay. pizzas all right uh texas tech football <clears throat> first question are you excited yes but i would be excited no matter what okay. so that's probably not you've a- been excited no matter what regime how many times okay after the after the game on the Double T 97.3 Coors Light postgame show, are you going to be a happy camper? <laughs> I'm always a happy camper. Not always. No, sir, you're not. No, no, sir, you're not. <laughs> um, How many times right now do you think? I, I think I'm going to be happy seven times. Seven times. Okay. That's that's my comfortable feeling that I feel like I, I don't I don't feel like I'm going out on a wild limb there. I, I think that is a pretty wild limb. A lot of folks do. I mean... Although, after listening to Coach McGuire yesterday at the Ronald McDonald Charity uh, quarterback sack event, I'm, I'm pumped up. I mean, I'm excited. I mean, he, I, I think he's got this thing rolling in the right direction. I may get higher by, by Friday. All systems go. I mean, he feels really, really good about his secondary. Um, 
Feels yeah, really good about you. Better. So are you up awesome. to six wins now? I'm not, I, I'm still I'm still at five. Okay. I'm still at five. You're pumped up for your five, though. <clears throat> I'm pumped up for the program because I think he's building a firm foundation, which is not something that I don't think we've ever done here in the time that I've lived here, and I and I go back to the Spike Dyke era. I I, I don't think any coach that has come in has done uh, as good a job in terms of from a recruiting standpoint <clears throat> or building a foundation where you could go, hey, I, I kind of look down the road and see us getting old with this guy, and – you feel like that um, this this is not a leapfrog situation, um, and there's not this air of doubt. Of can he sell this program? Um, can can you get? Because look, as you well know, as a, as a former coach, the better players that you recruit or bring into your program, the better coach that you are. And I just have this feeling with the guys that he's bringing in, even the the ones that are going to be freshmen, um, that you're going to have to you know, grow old with a little bit, that the, the foundation is, is is solid. That's the appearance that I have right now in my mind. Well, here's why I am. Maybe it has less to do with, I think there's an, well, I don't know what you, what I base this on necessarily, but I think it's both who you are and who everybody else is. It, it's, a, it's a combination. Uh, but when you look to your left and your right, I just don't see anybody in the in, in the Big Twelve, that I'm like, yeah, there's just so much more talent and more mm-hmm. wherewithal that we can't win a bunch of these games. And, and I think that I think that's a great great point, um, because there's not a what you would term as a dominant school. Maybe maybe it will turn out to be Oklahoma and Texas, but let's you know let's face it, Oklahoma's got a coaching change. They've got a probably some philosophy changes that are going to take some time for them to. To get in, they and they've lost more in the transfer portal, I'd say, than they gained. They've lost, right? And then you have Texas, and I think Steve Sarkeesian and what he's doing down there is still, still a big old huge question mark. I believe that hype train when I see it. I mean, it's mm-hmm. the same every single year. Yeah, and so I don't, you know, and that's a team that you should have at least gone to the wire with last year, and instead you got you got rolled up on. But I mean, there's too much. There's too much you bring back on this team. I just think that that that's being that's being a little bit. It, the cupboard's not bare. It, 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 it's not at all. Uh, and I don't think it necessarily was at all in the, in the Matt Wells era. You just couldn't quite get over the hump in individual games. But You, you just made coaching decisions that weren't very good. Your defensive – well, and I would I, – we might – I might have to dispute you on that later because y'all, y'all talked about something yesterday morning that, that, that got me thinking uh, how, how the – the, the view of Matt Wells and his coaching decisions is a lot more to do, I think, with the execution of how those decisions went than it always necessarily did with the decisions themselves. And you can come back and say that's about coaching, but... It is about coaching. But, but there's things that, that, if things happen differently, we don't talk about him the same way. Yeah. Um, so, I, I don't know. That's another, that's another conversation. But your secondary is, is back in, in full force. Your defensive line in most cases, is back. Uh, and, and, and you bring back way more in that position, I think, than you have in a long, long time. Your linebacking core is not as, as uh, you know, veteran heavy, but you've still got guys that have played a lot of a lot of snaps there. And you got a ton of quarterback where even if someone gets hurt, you feel like you got someone to go to. Your running backs are great. The, the, only, the only position on the whole field that I feel like you have questions about still – and, and you should be as in good a shape as you've been, at least if not better, is offensive line. Mm-hmm. And so I don't, I don't see where anywhere in all that, I, I stop that's a, and that's go, kind man. Of a we, critical one though. How we, you know, it's very critical, but I don't see us being any worse there than we've been. Okay. And we haven't been good there really, mm-hmm. but I, I don't, I don't see us going backwards up front. And, and so put all that together, and I, I, I think there's no reason to think that you can't at least, at least win seven games if the coaching in the game in the moment doesn't get in your way and why why should we predict that everything else this guy's done so far has been the right call yes every every door he's opened the beautiful girl's been there not the lion every (laughs) every door yeah uh pj says this coach totals uh, last night at his autograph signing that we are stuck with him and he's dying here I, i believe that i mean he got emotional just talking about the opportunity that's here for him and being uh, the head coach of this football program, and uh, I mean, he, there's there's real raw emotion there in his voice when he speaks about it. Man, when you have something like that, it's it's pretty cool. Big plays and even bigger laughs. 
This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3. All right, let me uh, give you some thoughts from uh, Coach McGuire yesterday at the Ronald McDonald uh, House Charity uh, quarterback sack uh, event, which I'm sure that you can contribute to. He said this, uh, amongst a lot of things that he said, because that event uh, has frustrated me sometimes um, because I get the whole sack and I get the whole concept of what they're doing uh, in terms of raising money. I'm not. A, I'm, I'm certainly all in on that because what they do um, with the Ronald McDonald House Charities is wonderful in terms of providing people who unfortunately have children that have long-term stays uh, at the hospital with a room or a place or you know, um, just, you know, a place to kind of get away, uh, in some cases sleep, you know, spend several weeks at a time. If they have a child that's in the hospital, all that is good. My frustration has been, um, we've never really <laughs> seemed like made defense an initiative where you could raise some real money, uh, by getting more sacks, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. You can always just donate more. Per I always, sack. I've always thought, I've always thought that it should be touchdowns that we should be after right that that would have yeah that around, been, around here that would have been, been a better fundraiser ex, ex, exponentially better but coach mcguire said yesterday and he was all in on the quarterback sack and the event and the ronald McDonald house charities and as 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 anybody would be right as any of us are uh he said this though we will hit the quarterback <laughs> i i don't know i don't know that i've ever heard a head coach say that you know, saying we will hit the quarterback and basically saying the last two years, he was the defensive line coach at Baylor. And he said last year we sacked the quarterback or I think his second, not particularly last year, maybe the year before that, he goes, we sacked the quarterback 46 times, Oof. 46 times. He said, we will, we will hit the quarterback. He said this <clears throat> about Josiah Pierre, the linebacker, <laughs> Josiah Pierre. He said this. He said, number eight is about to hurt someone. He said he's up to 245 pounds. He is really excited about him. That's a name I've been waiting to see if it, if he was going to, you know, I almost wondered if he would not become a guy that you saw, you know, a transfer story on out of nowhere because he, I remember feeling like his recruitment was was fairly good deal, like a like pretty prominent deal that we got him. And then you just haven't seen that turn into much. Uh, so, yeah, I, I'm excited to hear that as well. Okay. So he also said this, and every coach has his kind of his sayings that he that he has. Um, you know, Coach Wells was a we S, we S and R guy, you know, and and, uh, and I like that. I, 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 I like that too. But I like this, what Coach McGuire had to say. He said, we will be an effort-based team. In other words – you are never, ever going to see and basically a lack of effort from his football team collectively. And they strive on effort for the guy left and effort for the guy right of you, which I mean, you spoke to just a few minutes ago. Um, he also uh, is uh, extremely high on Malik Dunlap. And um, he, he said this about his uh, secondary. He said, man, he goes, he goes, Viewed, views Marquise Waters as a leader. Jamie would be happy with Coach uh, McGuire because he referred to him as Marquise and not Muddy. Ah, Jamie. Jamie, just he's not a nickname guy. But but he did call. He did, he did call uh, Dadrian uh, Taylor Demerson. He did call him Rabbit. Okay, so on one hand he called Marquise Marquise, and the other hand he called uh, <laughs> Dadrian Taylor Demerson Rabbit. Okay, but he said this about Malik Dunlap. He said he has transformed himself the most. And they put a GPS on these guys. You know, a lot was made of um, some basketball things about players wearing vests and having heart rates and things like that. The men's basketball team's done that or did that under Coach Beard. I don't know if they do that under Coach Adams because I haven't been to as many practices of his as I, as I went to a few of Coach Beard's. But they do have these monitors on these athletes so they can kind of see what they're doing. Uh, it's not all negative, okay? Mm -hmm. um, it is designed to kind of give give you some baselines and give you some measurements, whether it's heart rate or, in this particular case, Malik Dunlap. Uh, he, they had him on the GPS. They tracked him uh, at 23 miles per hour in terms of his speed. Uh, Coach McGuire said he's never seen that. 
So I've never seen that. And, and and honestly, Malik Dunlap is probably the sixth or seventh name I would even list on guys I'm excited about in that second. But honestly, I could I talked about this a week ago with Hacks on the air. I didn't mention him at all. I think I mentioned a ton of secondary guys. He wasn't even on my radar. So I'm just it's hard for me to believe that you're not gonna have the deepest, best secondary you've had. Maybe ever. I mean, going back to Spike Dyke, Jamar days. Wall, Darcel McBath days. Yeah. I um, mean, who else was part of that deal? Uh, Taylor Charbonnet. I mean, I yeah. I, since then, I don't know that you've been anywhere close to as much as you've got piled up back there. He uh, he was also uh, very complimentary of uh, uh, Adrian Taylor Demerson and Miles Price about their voices. He said they never stopped talking. Never stopped talking. Uh, he feels great about the secondary. He said this about the heat. He said, hotter it is, we love it, and know that someone will wilt, and it ain't going to be us. <laughs> he said, you know, apologize for those of us in the stands, especially that Houston game that's going to be a 3 o'clock game. That's kind of what he was specifically referring to. Um, he he's, um, he's big on this. You know, we've talked, to, I think, a lot over the years about depth, uh, particularly on the defensive line and on the offensive line. And he was talking to... Tony Bradford, Coach McGuire, was telling this story about talking with Tony Bradford about, you know, basically who replaced him, you know, who who filled in for him because he wants his guys at around 40 or so, 46 plays a game, but he wants there to be somebody behind them because Tony Bradford told him, was like, I'd look to the sideline to come out and they'd shake their head and told me no. So basically what Coach McGuire is trying to get to, and I'm not saying he's there yet, is play as hard as you can for as long as you can and then get someone in there to do the same thing. In other words, have some depth so that you aren't trying to conserve some energy for the fourth quarter so that you can play your ever-living tail off. Uh, I've got more from him, uh, including stuff on the quarterbacks. We'll get to that at 8. And then uh, I've got some uh, logistics that uh, will take place during the season that I think you and others might have some interest in. Okay, I like logistics if it helps me get where I need to go. We'll see. I'll, I'll, I'll give them to you, and then you can, you can tell me if that affects you uh, in any one way or the other. Question of the day is next. And uh, a tidbit that I think is revealing as to who might be the starting quarterback. Okay? Mm. I'll run it by you guys, and you tell me if I'm thinking too hard. Recapping yesterday while looking ahead to today's sports day. This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3. Jamie's question of the day on Double T 97.3 is presented by Bizarre Solutions. Call them today for a free cybersecurity audit. All right, before the question of the day, Bobby Hot Dogs offers this man helping man. And I'll point this out to you because you're in this situation right now. Uh, Ponch and John, North Loop, near the 4th and Frankfurt uh, exit this morning. Okay, so... If you're headed out towards, and I am going to be going towards that direction today, so um, keep that and keep that in mind. And bear in mind also that today is the last uh, working day uh, of the uh, month of July. Not saying that they're not going to be out tomorrow. I think it's really, um, I think it really hitting below the belt when they're out on Sunday morning. You know, and people might be scrambling to go to church and they're on the interstate. And that to me is a dirty pool. <laughs> so there should just be no speed limit on Sunday morning it's on the kind of like the Audubon. I mean, it's not like it's it's not like it's just hugely God-fearing busy. God-fearing churchgoers may go as fast as they want. There's there's been maybe a time or two that I might have dilly dallied, and the lucky lady is like chomping at their heels to, you know, because she likes to get there a little little before on no, time. It's, it's the opposite of my house. Hmm? Don't you take different cars now? No. I thought you were taking different cars No, we don't. T- no, we I don't. keep threatening that, and I haven't done it yet. You're more <laughs> likely on Sunday morning, I feel like, to have the 85-year-old, you know, widow that's driving 10 miles an hour to church than the, uh, you know, 80. Yeah. All right, uh, question for us. All right. I love dredging up the past in a negative way because that's supposedly what I am on the Coors Light Post Game Show. Well, you're so, Mr. Negative. You've kind of assumed that mantle. If any... <laughs> So wrong. Uh, if any of the marked moments of coaching decision making by Matt Wells mm-hmm. 
had gone a different way, Mm -hmm. would we look at him differently? Let's be specific on, and I I do think the worst decision he ever made was the TCU second down field goal attempt. But. I don't know if it was the worst. I think it was. I think the onside uh, kick against Oklahoma State. Well, we can include that, although I think that's far less egregious in my opinion. And to me, the pooch kick against Texas. Well, and that I, I am I am there well was two docu- pooch kicks by the way in that deal, but yeah, I'm well documented on that. But let's let's say let's say that the field goal goes through in Fort Worth, and you cut it to what what would it have been? I think a six point game at that point. And then you would have had to onside kick it. Well, you had four minutes left, four or five minutes. That's there's a million things about that decision. Is our decision bad. is our defense going to stop him? Because we hadn't been able to prove that we had stopped that quarterback because he was running it right up the gut on us. Duggan. I think he even ran for like 80 yards against So, so let me give some context, okay? Because this is why I've been, I've been chomping at the bit for okay. 24 hours. So yesterday morning. Chomp, chomp away. Yeah, we're talking about, uh, I think Taylor mentioned, was asking, like, what, what was your favorite moment in athletics last year? And you're kind of going through sports, right? And uh, I, I, the, the Garibé kick got mentioned. And the Garibé kick... Outside, and I realized Matt Wells was no longer in charge. Sonny Cumbie was, and I'm a huge Sonny Cumbie guy. But that was probably the dumbest decision that could have ever been made, worse than any of the Wells decisions that there had been. To kick that? You're on the other side of the 50. It was a 62 yard field goal. 63 yard field goal. It gets blocked. It gets it gets picked up at the back of the end zone and returned for a touchdown. There are <clears throat> ample ways that that goes bad. And you haven't had a guy hit a 50-yard field goal at Texas Tech in I don't know how long. So everything about them trotting out to kick that field goal was a horrible, bad, wrong choice. But nobody thinks of it that way. Because it was successful. Because it went through the uprights. And it's a we glorious moment. We had nothing moment. to lose. I just, my point Chuck, is. Alabama, uh, Alabama's on the phone for you. They would like to discuss a kick six. <laughs> Everybody, everybody that that piles on Matt Wells for coaching decisions, so much of that has less to do with what Matt Wells decided, and more to do with what happened as a result of his decision. He didn't say, "Hey guys, poorly execute the onside kick so it gets returned for a touchdown." Now I get it; he made the call, and his team had to be prepared. But the fallout of the decision was not fully on him. The missed field goal, while that was, there was a thousand things wrong with that choice as a coach. You were moving the ball as well as you had all day, and you just put a clamp on it to kick a field goal. But still, the missing of that field goal changes the whole conversation. The pooch kick, yes. Go back to the KU game that you lose. He didn't, he didn't lateral the ball after the blocked field goal. But somehow that feels like that piles in on him as a decision he made. My point is the aftermath of the decision has way more to do with it was with how 62, we view things. by the way. Jeff was right. Sixty two? Yeah. Yeah. The texture said that and I just I'm I'm looking at the play by play run sheet. Okay. Well I'm, I, I remember I'm, I'm hearing Brian Jensen in my head going, Sixty two yard field goal. Can, 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 can I can I point out I feel to like you, he's holding you it talk about this a, you talk about you talk about it's a poor decision. Let me just point out to you it was third and eight. And there's basically it's the last play of the game. Yeah, think about last plays of games. Then how those have panned out for you I, I don't, at Kansas? Okay, but I mean, I, I don't I don't view that as I mean, if he misses the kick, we're going to overtime. Unless it's short. But but you're you're I mean, there's no if it's blocked, you're dead. If it's picked up at the back of the end zone, I mean, how many things can go wrong in that situation? I, I, For a field goal I guess that is I, highly, highly unlikely to go in. I, I guess I just view it as you had nothing to lose there because your your program was pretty much dead in the water. I I, I don't disagree with you, but but sounds like what the heck? What what the heck, Jeff? What what's your take on this? When he when the play was called that they were kicking the field goal. If you've seen the movie Top Gun, when Merlin's in the back seat and uh, Tom Cruise says, I'm bringing him closer, Merlin's reply is, you're going to do what? That is exactly how I felt when they, it was announced that it was a 62-yard field goal attempt. You're going to do what? And I'm immediately picturing the kick six uh, Auburn-Alabama game going right up the gut in a game that you should have won, had enough opportunities to win against Iowa State, played 
probably the best game you'd played against Iowa State at that point, and you were going to lose it on a kick six. That is where my nightmare scenario. I was, I was not thinking about a block. I was not thinking about. I was not thinking about a a, a kick six. I was. I was. I. I, I was thinking because I had my my phone and my camera, and I was right there, and I got Garibay kicking it, and I was thinking, I'm gonna. Ha- I'm gonna have the. I'm gonna. Ha- he's gonna make this kick. And I, this is after the Kansas State game where you hadn't scored in the second I, half. I'm aware. Right. Had fired your coach. Had the week off. Mm-hmm. Nothing you you hadn't hired no wait, had you had McGuire you hadn't hired no McGuire you had yet. I think I think he, he was in the or, stadium that night I believe maybe not just hired him I, just, I think just so. hired him just I think, hired him I think just hired him it, it was just the the complete concept of all of that that getting into that point was it exciting sure was it a great kick yes I could have seen a hundred things that had gone wrong with that kick. I, and one thing that and went right. I think right. you had a chunk of time and a timeout to make one more throw if you wanted to as well. If you'd have done there that, there wasn't right a chunk away. of time. It was before. Oh, before the. If you if you'd have decided to do that before you. you settled on kicking the field goal. Okay, so uh, on. Um, if it was a forty-yard kick, I'm not having the same thought. If it's a fifty-yard kick, I'm worried. This was a sixty-two-yard yeah, field goal. This, this is this is beyond anything you've the seen. The NFL in record. Ages. Well, like 15 years ago was 63. It's this is not a normal kick. Tech Tech starts the drive uh, on their own 25. This is after Iowa State has has tied it up on a 29 yard field goal with one minute to go. Donovan Smith is is uh, complete to Miles Price for nine yards. Donovan Smith on second and one goes to Xavier uh, White for eight yards. Then uh, Donovan rushes for four to get the ball to the 46 yard line. Goes out of bounds. Then Donovan goes uh, up top to uh, Price for eight yards to the Iowa State 46. Then is incomplete. He, he spikes the ball, okay? Uh, then completes the ball, the pass to, uh, to White for, for two yards to the Iowa State 44 out of bounds. So there's not much time left here. And then Garibay kicks the field goal. I, I just, and again, I love Sonny Cumbie, but I felt like everything about those final minutes was mismanaged, but no one thinks of about that because you made the field goal and so if the onside kick against texas the year before has gone better he's not in as much hot water as he is in the final year and probably maybe survives the kansas state game at that point i just take your pick of any one of those things going the other way and you were losing at tcu you were losing at oklahoma state all those moments you were already losing it did not change the game but we remember them very vividly as stupid coaching decisions You've been listening to the Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3. For more from Lubbock Sports Station, go to double T 973.com.